Hello and welcome to Newswatch with me, Samira Ahmed. A week on from that royal wedding, did BBC News get its coverage right or get too caught up in the fervour? Now, what were you doing last Saturday morning? Well, almost 80 million of us were tuned into the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Most of us were watching on the BBC, which was widely praised for its coverage of the event. But with a YouGov poll last week, apparently finding two thirds of Britons weren't interested in the royal nuptials, it's fair to say that not everyone was satisfied. Here's the reaction of three viewers to what they saw last weekend, starting with Mike Ryan's thoughts on the news priorities shown on last Friday's bulletins. The final countdown to the royal wedding as Meghan... My concern Martin is that the most important news of the day was the terrible shooting in America and the, um, the horrible plane crash in uh, Cuba. And I feel that those more worthy and more important than the um, events of the next day. Two thirds of the British public weren't interested in the royal wedding, but you wouldn't have guessed that from the BBC's coverage. If it's frivolous and if it feeds the royal soap opera, well, that's fine. You see, the BBC has a duty to inform and to do that in a balanced way. But once again, it's shown that when it comes to the monarchy, it's got a blind spot. I'm not saying that the BBC shouldn't cover it, but it should be covered as part of the news cycle, not as the entirety of the news cycle. Those who want to watch The Royal Wedding could do so on BBC One. Those who wanted a full and proper news cycle should have been able to do so on the news channel. And the fact that the BBC didn't offer that choice, I think goes against their charter obligations of making sure that they offer programming for every licensed fee payer in the country. To discuss how BBC News handled the Royal Wedding, I'm joined by Gavin Allen, the controller of daily news programmes, and by Leo Stevenson, one of the viewers who contacted us about the coverage. Uh, Leo, first, what was your view of it overall? Uh, it's ridiculously over the top. I just I couldn't understand how so much saturation coverage of this one event in all the days leading up to the wedding and the wedding itself could be so ridiculously exaggerated to the point that it pushed out far more important stories backwards into, into oblivion. To have a whole day on the Saturday dominated on the news channel by this one story and even so on the BBC as, uh, One as well. I mean, how many people can't get BBC One and the news channel? What's that about? Can we start with that one in a way, Gavin? Because it does baffle viewers that the news channel was showing exactly the same for, f for five hours as BBC One. And if you want news, there was nowhere to go. Except that was news, to be clear. I mean, I think... What Apart the news... from the Royal Wedding, no, there but was no What the news no channel news. tries to do is, is different to what BBC One is doing. BBC One is obviously broadcasting a special event for millions of viewers. What the news channel is trying to do and does on a daily basis is take the main news, live events, go live to events. This was the main live event. Rather than having a totally separate setup that duplicated or was separate to BBC One, it made it sensible as a decision to combine that and run it as one. But with, people... with a news channel ticker, making sure you could see what other news was happening. But there was no news at all on the news channel from 9 a.m. to 9.15 p.m. on the Saturday except for two half-hour sports bulletins. How can you justify that? Because I think when a nation, on the day itself, when, as you said yourself, when millions of people are tuning in for this one event, at a time when, yes, there was other news, I totally accept there was the, the Cuba crash and the shooting uh, in America, which we did cover the day before, day before, forgive me, when, they, when it happened. But on the day itself, the whole of the country pretty much felt wrapped in this event. Now, I say the ticker serves, but the ticker serves an important point and a, an important purpose of trying to show, in brief, I grant you, but constantly what else is happening. And it did that throughout but that time. But people could just watch BBC One. So if they turn onto the news channel, yeah. they want news and mm. they want more than the Royal Wedding. You haven't un explained why well, you, you say, couldn't... Well, well, hold on, but it's not just the case that you must always show totally different events. And also, if you're going to the news channel for the news, and this is the main live event happening, just as we did with Manchester this week or Grenfell this week, then you are committing to a story, of course. And it does, I don't deny it, it does, of course, push other news out, but you're making an editorial decision that this is the main thing that we want to now look at. Leah? Whatever happened to choice? 
you've got two channels covering, covering exactly the same event. For a if period I, of time? Yeah, for a, period for of a time. long period of time. Sure. No, exactly and it was headlines for days leading up to it, with everything else that's going on. I don't think this is just a poor editorial dis decision. This is actually flies in the face and de erodes the whole purpose of, for instance, the news channel. The news channel is news, almost plural news. Mm. Other things were going off, great importance, I could list them, you know what there was going on. And this wedding. Now I've got nothing against it as an important story, it should have been up there. But to have had such enormous saturation of coverage like that, I think TV licence players deserve something much better than that. Look, I too, I'm, I'm never going to argue that everyone is going to be delighted with how much coverage we gave it. And I'm certainly not going to deny that we, we gave it a fair bit of coverage. There's no two ways about it. Of course we did, and particularly on the day itself. But in the build-up to it, whilst we also did a lot of coverage, we absolutely covered other news events as well. Yeah, but when you get, if you don't mind me saying so, I mean, you've got hour after hour of the most inane conversations and speculation about mm. the wedding dress. You remember Reef, you sort of uh, oh. educate and inform and all the rest of it. Well, and entertain. And entertain. Yeah. Well, you're down on the entertainment side, but the information side, even the strap lines you mentioned on the BBC News Channel, for hour after hour, every time I turned it on, had mm. something about the wedding. And you had the wedding at the top of it as well. Look, I absolutely accept there's certain elements, what dress she's wearing, what the flowers are. The to me, Personally, was I massively interested? Not particularly, but millions absolutely were in terms of the fashion industry, what this means, that it was a British designer, the, um, the why the flowers were chosen. And I think it's a wedding. So inevitably, with a wedding, there will be a lot of conversations about who is arriving at the wedding, who the stars are, but that is still informing, that is still entertaining. Well, there's, actually, a, there's an argument about educated. how much of that is news. I want to move on to bring up some of the other issues viewers mm. were raising in the week running up to the wedding, which is um, connected to that larger issue about how hard this news was. Lots of complaints, viewers saying you were treating Thomas Markle, Meghan's father, and whether he would attend mm. as this huge story at exactly the same time as the royal family was asking for privacy. Why? Well, we did give him privacy in the sense of we didn't send anyone to camp outside his house, as many news no, but organisations did. No, speculated a lot about well, it. Well, actually, no. When he issued statements, which he did through TMZ, when uh, Meghan Markle herself issued statements, of course we covered that as news events, and I think that's perfectly legitimate to cover it. Not a sense that it wasn't hard news to be focusing what was going on within a family. Well, it's hard news if, if the palace is issuing statements, and if he himself is issuing statements, in an event that on the Saturday and building up to is a big event itself, then of course contributory parts to that are going to be news. One other question that viewers sent in. You, the BBC, sent a correspondent to Los Angeles mm. to interview a man describing in detail his uh, uh, Meghan's first kiss with him at school when she was just 13. Is that really appropriate? No, but we didn't do that. We didn't send a person specifically to do that. We, did, we sent a correspondent to do a quite in-depth background piece on who is Meghan Markle. Now, as part of that, yes, you interview the people in the past of her life. And I think that's perfectly legitimate in trying to find out who is this person because there was a massive interest in somebody that most people were still unfamiliar with. But we didn't send to interview the person who was the initial boyfriend, no. Leah, final brief word to you. Well, that's a good example of how I'm afraid to say how bad the editorial decisions were, that that was included in a major news bulletin at all. I'm sorry, somebody's first kiss is about as important as my first kiss. It's just not news. If you marry a princess, we may well cover that, actually. I'll let you know. We'll have to leave it there. I'd like to thank both Leah Stevenson coming on as a viewer and Gavin Allen for answering all the questions. Thank you.